Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel in another tutorial. Today I am happy to sew along with you the Companion Carpet Bag by Sewing Patterns by Mrs. H. Now I tell you, this has been on my bucket list for years to make. I don't know why it took me so long to make it. Super fast to make, pretty easy to make. The hardest thing to do was to put uh, the frame in, but really I actually do the whole process of the frame pretty much on camera. So you can see it isn't, uh, it, it doesn't take that much time. It's not that hard. One of the easiest frames that I um, have ever installed. But let me show you some of the amazing features of this bag. So it has a magnetic slip pocket on this side. I don't have one on the back, but it would be so easy just to do another panel like this on the back. Um, Check out that shape. It is a birth bag. My favorite thing about this is how it opens with the frame. Look at that. This is the small version. There is a large and a small version for the pattern. The frames can be purchased at Emmeline Bags. Um, I put in my uh, usual zipper pocket and slip pocket like I do in all my bags. So those are kind of the same and a little bit different than the pattern, but almost the same process. Um, other things that I changed um, in, there's Coco, she says hi. Um, in the pattern, she has the, the straps either going sewn in right here or with the triangular, uh, rectangular connectors, or rectangular, they're not rectangular, rectangular ring connectors um, from Emmeline Bags. I have a hard time installing those. Those are not my favorite, I will admit it. So, but I still wanted to have a connector. So I drew myself out a connector um, that would fit on this pretty well. Uh, and I show you in this video how I do install those. Again, it's just a connector that I drew out myself. So you kind of choose a shape that you want. There's lots of free uh, connector templates out there that you could probably modify to fit in this. It has to be a relatively short connector for the small bag because it is so small and you didn't want the pocket to um, cover it up. Uh, another option would be is you could actually do a continuous connector that goes and attaches through the bottom here that kind of goes behind here. That would be something really pretty to do too. Um, on this one, I did do rolled handles. Um, I don't know how I feel about the rolled handles on this bag. Uh, again, it the pattern calls for the flat handles, but I thought I would try a rolled handle. I think they're a little bit too delicate for this bag. Um, so I think if I make one in the future, it will be with the flat handles. But hey, curious to know what you think of that. Um, I do have a tutorial for how I did a rolled handle. So I will... Um, eventually get that up and it'll be in my bag makers 101 playlist it is a rolled handle tutorial for thicker vinyls this mora vinyl was just a little bit too thin for it but it still worked out okay i just added a little piece of deckable light in there made everything okay um materials i use in this bag uh, this upholstery vinyl i got from galaxy customs every now and again she gets these upholstery no, it's not vinyl sorry upholstery fabric um on, on her site and it's kind of like first come first serve type thing. I don't think she carries the same prints over and over. So I got this one, not sure if there's any left on the side or not. I used uh, the Mora full leather from Emma Line Bags. My stabilizers, I have Decaville Heavy in my bottom. Um, so the Pretty in Pink Sew Foam from Galaxy Customs and all of my cotton pieces and including my upholstery fabric, I backed with uh, EB Fuse Light from Emmeline Bags, which is a medium woven interfacing similar to SF 101 or Woven Fuse or Sew Fuse or whatever. Any medium woven interfacing would work for that. Um, all my hardware, well, my hardware is from Emmeline Bags. My zipper and zipper folds are from Blue Cala. What else? What else? Yeah. Um, again, we did do this as a sew along in January 2023. If you wanted a slowed down lesson on how to do this, you can just definitely join the membership side. Uh, tier number two has so you can see the past live replays of any classes that are more than six months old. So that is an option. If you join into the Tuesday or Thursday uh, tiers, uh, you have access to them right away. So that's always an option and it's never ever um, uh, a necessity to do. It's just options that I like to have for everybody up there. Um, what else? What else? Well, so yeah, all I did differently was I did the straps different. I made strap connectors and of course I did my lining pockets the same way I do in all of my bags. Anyways, how about we get to making this bag? So you're going to need some number five zipper tape, number five zipper pull. If you're doing connectors like me, four rectangular rings and optional four strap ends. A magnetic snap. Four purse feet. 
your nameplate, and of course your frame and rivets. I'm going to be using foam and Decavol Heavy in this bag as well. Uh, you're going to need your two or two main panels, your main slip panel, your two lining panels, and your lining slip pocket panel. These are all backed with EB Fuse Light. Your two zipper pocket pieces, your exterior and your lining gusset piece, your slip pocket piece, two handle pieces. two um, frame channel pieces and your connectors which I just drew out on a piece of paper like so and then a large piece to do that. So if you're doing rolled handles like me I like to use this quarter inch rope so um, you can definitely do that. And of course I will be using Giardini edge paint to do some edge painting on my handles as well as my connectors. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do rolled handles. You can do any handles that you like. I do have handle classes down below in the description. Okay, so the way I'm going to do connectors, so I've drawn out connectors that will fit good on my, um, on the small version of this bag. Again, I just drew these out. You can definitely find free uh, connector templates online. So the four that I have cut out, I'm putting some double-sided tape onto the back side. Again, you can use some glue for this if you prefer. Then we're gonna stick this wrong size together on that, um, that scrap piece that we cut out to make these connectors. This just helps make it so we can cut them nice and even to one another. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to top stitch an eighth of an inch away from the edges of each of those connectors all the way around. Now you'll see I do a lot of hand cranking because I like my curves to be really, really nice and even. And I find that it just, uh, it's worth the little extra time it takes just to have a little more control of your needle when you're going through curvy sections. So that's one done. Go ahead and do the same with the other three. Now that that's done, you're going to go ahead and you're going to use the connector that we had drawn out as our guide for cutting it away from the other pieces like so. This gives us a really nice even edge to go ahead and do our edge painting on. So I'm going to go ahead and edge paint all of these. Uh, if you need a class on how to do edge painting, that's down below in the description. Next we're going to work on our front slip pocket. So I'm going to take my lining piece and I'm going to find the top and bottom centers. And I always like to just double check that they are definitely center. So I'm going to take my ruler and make sure that my snip is accurate, which it is. Now we're going to measure down uh, one inch. Again, check the pattern for uh, measurements, depending on if you're doing the large or the small. And we're going to go ahead and install our um, the male side of our magnetic snap right here. One inch down from the top centered because I'm using cotton. I'm going to use a little bit of fray check just to make sure that my fabric doesn't fray. So go ahead and install that backed with a piece of heavy interfacing. So once that's in, I also like to put a little bit of Gorilla tape or duct tape over top of the prongs for extra security. Okay, so on the front pocket piece, I want to go ahead and install my nameplate. Again, measurements for nameplates are always different because all of our nameplates are different sizes. I've decided I want to do this one from the bottom centered and make sure this is definitely centered so I'm not, I don't have a crooked uh, or off center nameplate. And I'm going to put mine about one and a quarter inches up from the bottom nice and centered and install it there. 
Okay, so that's all installed. Again, I used another piece of Gorilla Tape on the prongs. Now we're gonna take the lining in the exterior, match up those center top pieces, and clip that top raw edge together with these right sides together. And then we're gonna sew across here with the 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Oh dear, looks like one of my baby Yoda's has face planted in the background there. <laughs> that would be because baby Dexter was trying to, uh, to get him down. Gotta love a puppy. All right, so now what we wanna do is bring these wrong sides together. I'm gonna give this a good press at my machine. And then after I've pressed it, I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch along that stitched edge and then baste the other raw edge down. So that's our front pocket done. Next, we want to put it to our front panel, but we need to install our female side of our magnetic snap. So once again, find the top and bottom centers of your front main panel. And check the measurements in the pattern again for the size you were doing. Um, I, I do, it's a little different than the pattern here because I can never make my magnetic snaps line up. So this is my method because I find it <laughs> works best for me. So along the bottom of the slip pocket and the main panel, line it up. I am super impressed with how my fussy cutting worked here. You can barely tell the line where my slip pocket starts and stops. I'm usually not that lucky. So we're just gonna put a few clips in just to hold that where I want it to be. And then with a friction marker, so this washes away, I'm just going to kind of color the nub on my male magnetic snap and push it down on that main panel and it leaves a mark. And then I know that's where I want to install it because it will match up perfectly. Again, you could definitely use the measurements in the pattern. This is just the way it works for me to make sure it matches up good. So I've gone ahead and I've installed that female side. Now we're going to snap that in place and once again, go and clip the raw edges together. And then we're going to go ahead and base this in place. Okay, so now we are going to work on our gusset piece, our bottom and gusset piece. So you want to find the long centers on both sides as well as the two short ends. We want to find the center. So let's do that right away. And I'm going to show you my method of how I, when you have a gusset that is also the bottom, centering that uh, heavy stabilizer perfectly. So definitely make sure that these marks are centered. Again, I always double and triple check. And then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to draw a line from center mark to center mark. Okay, so from the long centers like so, and then along the long side as well. And then I'm gonna take my decoval heavy piece here and I'm gonna find all four sides, the centers, just like we did with that gusset piece. Gussy, gusset piece. And we're going to mar uh, mark those centers with lines from center to center. And now all you have to do is line up those lines and you will be perfectly centered and go ahead and fuse that heavy stabilizer on. 
All right, so I already went on and installed my purse feet. Um, if you need a class on that, down below in the description, all of the measurements are in the pattern and I've taken all three of my main panels and back them with my sew-in foam. Now it's time to work on the connectors. So I've gone ahead and I've already um, done my edge painting. Now, I if I did these again, I would have wished I'd drawn the little ends of my connectors just slightly longer. You want them to hang down at least three quarters of an inch, which I had just barely enough. So I've marked a three quarter inch line on the right sides of those. I'm gonna use a little double-sided tape. Again, you can use a clip here. And I'm going to take my rectangular ring and put it along that line and stick it down. Again, I wish I made the top of the connectors so they came down just a little bit further. I would make sure that they're at least an inch long. Then I'm going to take some uh, double-sided tape and put it on the back and set that aside for now, doing that for all four. Okay, so now this is you're gonna have to um, kind of eyeball this because um, we want to mark where our um, our stitch lines are gonna be. I'm gonna measure down. Oh, I think that was about three eighths of an inch or so. Again, I could have probably went down a little bit further along here if I had a little bit more um, turn to the back. But again, I cut those a little short, but it still worked out. I'm just going to be closer to the hardware than I usually am. So this is our stitch line for when we go to put this on just to give us a rough guide. And if you're using the triangle rings, definitely go ahead and use the pattern for the placement. I'm going to kind of use the pattern for an idea of where these need to be placed. Again, this will be different for everybody depending what kind of connectors you have drawn out. I do know I want my connectors to be about a quarter of an inch or so above my slip pocket piece but that's for the size of my connector. Again you're going to have to figure out the placement of your own if you depending what you've drawn out. I'm going to take the tape off and I'm going to stick this about where I think it's going to be good. You want to make sure you have at least three eighths of an inch seam allowance from the top and from each side because that is where we'll be sewing on the channels and the gussets. So you keep that in mind. And I'm really just placing them around the same place that the pattern piece shows where the triangle connectors are. So I'm starting with the front panel. The front panel is good to start with first because you need it to not interfere with that slip pocket and then we can use this front panel as a guide when we go to put the connectors on the back side. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully, once these are centered and where I want them to be, I'm going to follow my previous stitch line from when I uh, created my connectors and then go across that line that we drew. I'm going to put it on my left zipper foot again because I am going to be sewing very close to my hardware because my back pieces of my connectors were not as long as I usually make them and I have to make sure that they are caught within um, the stitches so my rectangular rings will not fall off. So this is a good thing. So again, uh, you'll see me doing a lot of hand cranking because I'm following that same line of stitching I had made when I um, had created my connectors. When you get to that line we had drawn, you go ahead and go across that line and that'll secure those rectangular rings in place so they won't fall off. Make sure you use a scrap of vinyl underneath your walking foot to protect the hardware. That walking foot can really eat up your vinyl and hardware if it gets stuck on there. I also am doing the method. I kept my threads long when I started because I didn't want to have that back stitch um, excess of um, thread there. So I pulled my threads long. I've ended in the same thing with my needle down in the same starting stitch, pulling that top thread through and tying those four strands off. Again, you can back stitch if you prefer as well. This is just my preferred method. You'll go ahead and do that with the other front connector. Okay, so that's the two front connectors done. So as I said before, I'm going to kind of use 
because there's really no method to my madness here. I'm going to use my front panel as a guide to where I will be putting them on the back panel because we don't have that slip pocket to kind of know where we're measuring up and everything is a guide there. So I'm just using my chalk to mark where it will be. And then we'll be putting them on exactly as we did the front panel, sticking them on with that double-sided tape. You will notice I kept the double-sided tape outside of where our stitch line would be, so uh, it wouldn't gum up my needle too bad if you're worried about that. My industrial sews right through it, but I know some machines like it and some machines don't. Dexter says hi everybody if you heard that. Okay so now it's very important that these line up exactly on both sides so if you take these and you put it right sides together with your front main panel you'll be able to see if they are lining up. If they're not adjust accordingly till they do and then go ahead and sew those connectors on the back panel on exactly like we did with the front. So that's done. I've gone ahead and I put in a some rivets in there, backed with some deckable heavy scraps. And now it's time to attach the gusset. So we have our bottom center of our main panel here. We're going to take our, I'm just trimming off some foam, our gusset piece and match up right sides together that middle section, that middle uh, center piece. Secure with three or four clips. Next, you're gonna bring up the side of the gusset Again, I'm just clamping up some uh, foam that's outside. I should have done that before. Lining that up with the top like so. Secure with three or four clips. Do the same with the other side. I find doing it this way really helps make sure that that uh, fabric is distributed evenly all the way around. This is not a hard curve to sew around at all. It's a nice and gradual curve, so it's not hard. Now you may see that when you get to the corners as you start doing that fabric that it looks like the gusset doesn't fit like this, like it looks like it's out by a quarter inch or so. So all we're going to do is take our scissors and just on the gusset we're going to just put like little eighth inch snips just around that corner and what that does is it helps spread that fabric out when you squeeze it together like this so it fits around that corner. You'll do the same with the other corner as well. It's because we're trying to make a straight piece rounded. Okay, I hope you guys like this angle. It's a new one that I am trying. We're gonna go ahead and sew this on with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Sometimes when you get to these corners, having a stiletto handy to help hold it in place works. I was looking around at this point. I have no idea where my stiletto is. I really need to clean my studio. Once that is done, kind of run your finger down and around, make sure everything was caught and take your pinking shears and just on these corners, go ahead and snip the rounded corners. You will do the exact same thing to attach the back main panel to the other side of the gusset. So this is what it looks like when it's done. Uh, pull it right side out so you can double check to make sure you don't have any uh, nips or tucks to make sure everything was caught and it looks good to you. Mine looks good. This is looking super cute so far. Set that aside for now. Okay, so now we're gonna work on our channels here for our frame. So let's do one. We're going to measure in a half inch from each of the short ends. And we're gonna to need to hem this. We wanna hide that raw edge. So we are going to fold it a quarter of an inch into that line and then fold it upon itself again another quarter of an inch and secure with clips. If 
You'll do that for all of the sides and then we're going to go ahead and we are going to um, sew, top stitch those in place with a scant quarter of an inch seam allowance. And just make sure you're catching that fold in the back. So the fold should be a quarter of an inch. So if you go just under a quarter of an inch, it will catch it good. And you'll do that for both channel pieces. So that's done. Now we want to fold these in half wrong sides together, secure with clips along the wrong, wrong the, sorry, the raw edges. I'm putting clips on the folded edges just to make sure they stay in nice and even. Clip all the way across that raw edge and then we're going to go ahead and we are going to baste that raw edge with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Only that long raw edge, that's all we need to baste. And I'm going to go ahead and chain stitch these just to save myself on some thread. Okay, so that is done. Now we want to find the centers of those raw edges. So fold it in half and make small snips. And then we're ready to connect this to the exterior of the bag. I'm just making sure they're centered to one another and they are. So I've once again put my exterior wrong sides out. I found this was the easiest way to sew this on. Match up that center with your main center on one side and clip it in place. Open up your side seams. It'll just help later on to um, have that bulk evenly distributed along there. And you're going to notice that the short ends of these channels should be approximately half inch from the side center pieces, which mine are. And then we're going to go ahead and base this in place with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So this is why I turned the bag inside out. I found this was the easiest way to do it. Um, I would have done it the other way if I was on my cylinder arm, but I'm not going to use my cylinder arm uh, for this tutorial. I want to show you how I would do things on just a flatbed this time. So stitch it in place with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. You will do the exact same thing with the other channel on the other side of the bag. Okay, so that is what that looks like. You can see here, just double check that it's all in and we're good. Okay, so I've already gone ahead and done my lining pieces. Slightly different, but kind of the same as the pattern. If you need to know how I do them, you can go ahead and look down in the description. Now what we're gonna do is take the panel with the slip pocket. I'm gonna just kind of put it centered on top of the wrong side of my gusset because from here to about here before it curves up we want to leave this open for turning. This is a little different than the pattern. I have severe carpal tunnel so I have a hard time pulling a bag just through the pocket. So we did leave the zipper pocket open because we will be still using that um, technique but we're also going to turn it through the bottom of the bag and then we're going to close the lining through the zipper pocket. So definitely do it as per the pattern if you want to skip the this step um, but this just works for me because I do have such bad carpal tunnel so what we're going to do is about till about two or inches or so down we're going to go three eighths of an inch seam allowance and then we're going to branch out to a half inch seam allowance um, but leaving that bottom mark open at the bottom and what this is going to do is keep the circumference of our bag the same as the exterior but make closer to the bottom of the lining smaller than the bag so our lining does not sag into the center of the bag. So I started at 3 eighths, I've now branched out to a half inch seam allowance. I'm going to backstitch when I get to that line we drew on the bottom where we will be turning it. 
jump over to the other line we drew on the other side of the open hole, add a half inch seam allowance, backstitch to about two, two and a half inches before we reach the top where we will branch back down into a three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Very important to keep the very top at a three eighths of an inch seam allowance so it's the same circumference as the exterior for when we go to put the lining on. So there's our opening in the bottom. You can trim just this corner area down a little bit. Make sure you don't trim too close to the opening because we will need to fold that under later. So I've left about an inch on either side of the opening. You're going to do the same on the other side but without leaving that opening in the bottom. So three eighths at each top side and a half inch all the way around. Opening in the zipper pocket, opening in the bottom. Now what we're going to do is take our lining right side out. I'm going to situate my uh, zipper pocket to be at the back or facing right sides together with the back of uh, my exterior. Match up the centers of our main lining and main exterior panels. And same with the other side. Next, you're going to match the center of the side. Line up the seams here. Make sure you are um, pressing them open. Do the same with the other side and then evenly distribute the fabric around in between all of those clip marks until the lining and the exterior are all clipped together. All right, so now I am going to take this to my machine. We're gonna sew these together with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. I'm gonna sew it from the inside of the bag like so because this is the easiest to do on a flatbed. If I had, well, if I was using my cylinder arm or if I was using a free arm, I definitely uh, would have done it from the outside of the bag all the way around because you'd have somewhere that the bag could go. But this is exactly how I do it when I do it on my flatbed machine. So that is all done. Make sure everything was caught. When it looks good, pull the lining up and through that opening in the bottom, go ahead and pull the bag right side out. I find if you get the bottom out after you've done that, it comes out pretty easy. Reach in through that hole and press out all of the exterior seams. And then go ahead and tug along here just to make sure everything was caught, which it was. Once it looks good, go ahead and push the lining inside. Press down that seam underneath the channel. This bag does not need top stitching at all, which is kind of nice. So just make sure you have the lining all pressed down. And now we're going to close up the holes in the bottom of the bag. So what you're going to do is go ahead and reach into your zipper pocket, pull your zipper pocket out and in the opening of the bottom of the zipper pocket, reach in and grab the opening in the bottom of the lining and pull it through there. And then match up the center marks on the bottom of those lining panels and clip it all the way across to where we see our stitches start and stop for when we uh, put the gusset onto our lining main panels. Then you're going to start and then stop at where our stitches start and stop from when we had put those together and stitch across there with a half inch seam allowance. Now this was a silly, silly camera angle because you can't see what I'm doing. I'm gonna switch it around here for you momentarily. Please hold. 
There we go. This shows a little better what I'm trying to do. So stitch across there with a half inch seam allowance. Once that is done, go ahead and stuff the lining back in through that zipper pocket. Make sure everything was caught. Mine looks good. And now all we have to do is go ahead and top stitch our zipper pocket closed. Make sure your raw edges are folded under, clip in place, and then top stitch that shut with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So far, so good. Okay, so now <laughs> we are going to work on this um, this frame. So you want to take out screws from each side. So each one will have one of these longy kind of pointy, the, the, the hinge. One will be on one side and one will be on the other. So there's two screws on each side to take it out. And this is what that looks like. Now I did this twice because the first time I put this in upside down. So I'm gonna explain how these hinges work. So if you fold it this way, it only goes so far, but if you fold it down this way, it'll go almost flush with the um, frame. And what we want to make sure it's going the right way is that part that's flushed with the frame, we want that to be setting right up against the side of the panel. If it's sat that way, then it will go in properly. So make sure you have it orientated the right way. I put it in the opposite way and yeah, it doesn't work that way. Feed it through the channel like so. It actually wasn't too, too bad at all. It just takes a little bit of time. See, I'm already through. And I'm just gonna put my hinge closed just so it kind of holds it in place there. We're gonna do the same with the other side again. Make sure, of course, this is gonna go on the opposite side of the other one, but again, how you can tell is that it's flush with itself here. And then where it's going to go, we wanna make sure will be flush. So that side would be the wrong side. We don't wanna do it there. We wanna do it on this side where it's nice and flush with the side, see, like that. And then put it on through. I hope that's not too confusing. So that's through both sides. And then you want to stick those ends back in and then you're going to re Well, first we're gonna double check that we did it right because the first time I did it the wrong way and it wouldn't close. So just kind of put those pegs back in, make sure that the frame hinges the correct way, which it does, and then go ahead and put in those screws to hold it in place again. Such tiny little screws. And I'm just using a little um, screwdriver that my son uses on electronics. If you have a little magnetic screwdriver, that would have been a lot easier if I had had that. So go ahead and install those four screws. You can also see I have already gone ahead and I put my handles on. I figured that might have been easier before I put the frame on, but in the end, it probably would have been easy one way or the other. Okay, so there it is. Once again, I'm gonna make sure it's hinged the right way because I'm paranoid. So you kind of push it in like this, tuck in the sides, they'll eventually get the memory for those sides to be tucked in. Just like so. Handles are on. And look at that, admire your work. And then we're done. All right, that's it, that's all. What did you guys think of that? It's actually a pretty quick make. It's it's super fun to make. And the hardest part, I think, was the screws on, uh, on the, um, the bag frame, but really,
that's just because I hate getting in there really tediously with little screwdrivers and such. But yeah, anyways, I hope you did like this tutorial. If you did, please make sure you give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. Again, if you want to check out any of my classes on the membership side, that's all linked down below. And if you want to support my channel further, you can also buy me a coffee. That's also linked down below. Anyways, until the next one, I'll catch you guys later. Bye.